Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 88. Today, we've got another Top 5 Guns video for you. And today, we're going to be checking out the Top 5 Mauser Rifles. You heard us right. Surplus Mausers. We love the Mauser action. There are so many awesome Mauser variants. Uh, you could go into an entire, you know, week-long dissertation about all the different Mausers. I mean, there's entire books written mm -hmm. on uh, the, the, the beautiful engineering and, and differences in all of these rifles. And uh, it's one of the most mass-produced bolt-action rifles. Uh, Definitely, and, definitely around. <laughs> and also probably one of the most copied actions over the years, too. Oh, right? certainly. Yes, Absolutely. certainly one of the most copied <clears throat> actions. Uh, the Turnbolt Mauser rifle has been used uh, by a wide variety of different countries and a wide variety of different conflicts and a very wide variety of different environments. Mm. Uh, that They've been used in all parts of the world and it's, and it's a proven battle rifle. And as a Turnbolt rifle, it is certainly a rugged, and functional piece of military. Now, uh, all the guns on this table are all cool, old-school mill serps, mm -hmm. and uh, these represent what I feel are some of the best ones. Uh, and, and the standards that I believe we really chose for this particular lineup is we want to have equal parts collectability uh, and maybe a little bit of scarcity and rarity uh, in there. So these are sort of gems that you can look out for. But then, too, man, accuracy and shootability, mm -hmm. like, you know, guns that are very accurate and easy to shoot. And uh, and also, we've got some cool cartridges uh, that these guns are chambered in that maybe some of you have never heard of. So let's strap in and get into this and, uh, and see what, what happens. And one of the neat <laughs> things, too, at least one of these rifles is kind of like a, a sleeper Mauser. But we'll get into that in a minute. So Argentine 1891. Very cool stuff. Okay, uh, this particular rifle, we have done a video on this particular one. It's 7.65 by 53. 7.65 by 53. Argentine. Argentine, yeah. So this is one of the earliest Mauser cartridges as well. All right, so like the old Belgian Mausers were chambered uh, in this cartridge, <clears> and of course <throat> the Argentines. And you can see this uses a very distinctive below the wood line type of magazine. So it's, it's a very early and some would say rudimentary style of magazine in the Mauser. And this represents literally the earliest smokeless magazine-fed Mauser rifles there are. And buddy, you want to talk about a gun that will absolutely shoot living daylights out. These things are accurate. They are fantastically accurate. And um, just an ode to history. I mean, they have a carbine version of this, which uh, definitely is a little bit more collectible than probably the original 1891. But fantastic Mauser rifles, excellent sights, standard Mauser uh, tangent style, like open sights. Cock on but, close yeah. action on the 91. Yep. And we're going to discuss the difference as we go. But, but. We've, we've taken this rifle out to um, 600 yards before, and they really, really do shoot quite well. And, um, you know, we're just using regular, like, modern loaded PPU ammo. And then you've got your Argentine short sword, which yeah. you still need to sharpen. That's right. It doesn't have an edge on it. but that's... So there's a sword that goes <clears throat> with the rifle. What do you think? <laughs> Perfect pairs. <laughs> Perfect pairs, right? Yeah, you know, for when your when your ammo runs out, you can ha have a sword charge. Okay, <coughs> so, really cool stuff. I guess moving on up the line, we've got the Gewehr 98. Oh right? yes. And what year is yours here? 1918. Yeah. This <laughs> this particular gun has a mirror shiny bore, yep. a really nice <laughs> condition bore on it, and uh, one of the most distinctive features of the Gewehr 98 is the roller coaster sights, mm -hmm. as they're called, because they look like a roller coaster. Okay. Uh, and that's one of the most distinctive features. And a lot of times these things are in the white. Mm. Now this one's been blued. This one is a Turkish capture. Uh, you'll know a Turkish capture. And that's pretty common for World War I. Like the Ottoman Empire was capturing guns mm. here and there. The Crescent Moon. The Crescent yeah. Moon is going to be your uh, indication of a Turkish capture. Uh, or a Turkish produced gun. Uh, this is a Turkish captured rifle. Not a Turkish uh, you know, made gun or like mm. a contract gun. Um, but yeah, you know, these guns are great. Now this is a cock on open version, which means that when the striker is in the forward position, it requires a little more force to get that bolt to cock mm. upon opening the bolt. Whereby the 91 we just looked at, it cocks when the bolt is closed. Many people um, attribute a little bit faster working of the bolt with a cock on close. Mm. Part of that reasoning is because you've already got forward movement. Forward movement, you've already got the momentum and you just kind of go home with it when it comes to a cock on close. Mm -hmm. With a cock on open, now this is actually the Mauser design that kind of found its way into what would become the more modern Mauser mm -hmm. rifles, but with the cock on open, it does require a little more force 
uh, to get that bolt to open. But man, what an accurate shooter. It is very accurate. Yep. And uh, one thing too about the Mauser rifles just themselves is the actions have been used for many, many years for uh, more custom, modern, like sporting rifles and such. Uh, the actions themselves are very strong. Not quite as strong as something maybe like an M17, you know, along the lines, but uh, many, many big bore cartridges have been uh, chambered in uh, old school, strong Mauser actions. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, 100%. And uh, the P17 action is almost a whole video in its own regard because the p17 action is one strong rifle action mm -hmm. and they've they've made some big bore hunting rifles and those things and they they can hold up to a lot of pressure the mauser action is a strong action now as you get into the most you know the 98 and above you do have what they call a third safety lug mm -hmm. on the bolt so you get a little bit of added strength uh, into the system the mauser action typically uses two uh forward locking lugs, and then a safety lug. Mm. Uh, some of these have them, some of them don't, but we'll get into those as we go. Indeed. Uh -huh. All right, so we're gonna just move down the line. This is an 1891-28 or 91-28 Persian Mauser. So this is, uh, I guess, Iranian uh, military. Now the Persians are considered far and above, head and shoulders, one of the finest Mauser rifles ever made. Uh, these are made in the famous Czechoslovakian Brno factory. Mm. And beautiful guns. Very, very. I mean, these are some of the most prized Mausers. Probably the Persians and probably the Venezuelans are the most sought after just for um, their their absolute beauty and just the quality of the metal, the quality of the wood, and you know the accuracy of the guns themselves because the Czechs really know how to put together a good rifle. Oh, you better believe it. Now, later on, uh, the Iranian military produced these outside of Tehran under contract. Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll find domestically produced Mausers using, you know, licensing from the Brno factory and probably tooling and expertise mm -hmm. passed along. Like you see that in a lot of different situations in military history. But this is an actual Brno produced. So it's a Czech Mauser, but made under contract for Iran. Mm -hmm. I mean, the unique features of okay. this, this rifle, you've got this just beautiful crest you know, on the receiver itself, you've got the Farsi markings all over the receiver, marking the uh, graduations on the rear sight and such, and the serial number and whatnot on the receiver itself. You have a very unique front sight protector. Oh, it's yeah. just a beautiful, beautiful gun. It's a unique gun and that if, if you're looking at a row of Mausers on a rack, you can instantly pick out a Brno mm -hmm. produced rifle because <clears throat> the woodwork is beautiful. Um, one thing that they stuck with on this style of rifle is the straight bolt mechanism. Mm -hmm. So it still retains a straight bolt, which is not a big deal. And it also retains the Gewehr 98 sling mounts. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, you have a couple of different sling mount options. Um, you know, this one's set up for kind of infantry style, uh, but they can be set up in a few different configurations depending mm -hmm. on how you want the sling set up. And what a fantastic shooter. Accurate, yeah. Very. This one, and I forgot to mention so far, uh, the 98 and uh, this particular Brno Mauser, they're in 8mm. Mm. Uh, the first one was our 765 by 53. 53. <laughs> it's hard Weird to, cartridges. It's like, what, like 300 different Mausers or more than that? And, I yeah. mean, God, probably, probably what, three dozen cartridges that they've been chambered in over the years? There are certainly I mean, a lot of weird cartridges, and there's a lot of little subtle things that you can look at on the Mauser pattern rifle to know uh, what type of cartridge it could or could not be chambered in. There's a lot of... Uh, Brazilian and Colombian and South American Mausers that were converted to 30 alt six, mm -hmm. and, and then you'll yeah. notice these little cuts in the front of the receiver. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, see this, see this cut. Uh -huh. Now, because this is an intermediate sized action, now we're going to talk a little bit about the Vigero Mauser. Now, this is, in my opinion, one of the probably most underappreciated Mausers there is. Mm -hmm. That's kind of our sleeper that's on the table. Boy, let me tell you, I almost don't want to make a video about it because I don't want the prices to go up. Oh, we've already made a video on it. <laughs> we have, we have, but. <laughs> But look, man, the, the Vigero Mauser is by far the finest Mauser rifle, in my humble opinion, mm. out there, okay? These things are used in shooting competition. They're so accurate. Um, and the guy that helped design these um, was an avid marksman and wanted lots of certain features put into the guns. They are lightweight. They point very naturally. They have a very, very functional front sight protector that is very much like an M39 or a K31. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of one thing you can instantly tell. They are chambered in 8mm. They use a specific uh, specialized action. It is not a standard Mauser action. This is an intermediate length action that is more akin to a sporting rifle mm -hmm. uh, than it is a military rifle. It keeps the weight uh, down. 
real nice. Uh, this gun does not uh, utilize a safety lug, a third safety lug, but it has a very beefy uh, set of locking lugs. Mm -hmm. Super, super smooth action. Wonderful trigger, excellent sights. Now, the cut in the uh, receiver face here is just for the overall length of the cartridges when running strip clips, correct? That's correct. So, so this one is chambered in 8mm Mauser. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll see some Brazilian and Columbia Mausers that have the full length 98 action, mm -hmm. but with the bout cut right here on the mm -hmm. front to clear the nose of an Alt 6. Bout cut. Because, yep. because the length of the Alt 6 is longer mm -hmm. than 8mm, yep. so they had to make a little, a little kind of bout right in there, a little cut. For the nose of the cartridge to clear. So if you're ever looking at a, a South American contract gun that has that little cut in the receiver, that you might want to suspect that it may not be eight millimeter anymore. It's been rebarreled to thirty out six. Now where were the uh, where were the seven millimeter Mausers uh, in play? Seven millimeter Mausers were in use in Venezuela. They were in use in Chile. Okay, so they were South Africa or South American too. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's seven what I thought. Mexico. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So see, you start getting into different contracts. Each uh, country would order the Mausers to their specification mm -hmm. and whatever cartridge that they chose, right? So military Mausers were um, fielded in everything from 30 out 6, 8 millimeter being the most common, mm -hmm. uh, of course, 6.5 by 55, 7 millimeter mm -hmm. Mauser. So let's get into 6.5 by 55. One of my favorite Mausers. Oh, dude, one Swedes. of my favorite cartridges, oh, gosh. much less my favorite Mauser. So um, at the time when the Swedes were developing their military rifles, uh, they decided to go a little bit small bore, okay, with small bore projectiles, okay, instead of an eight millimeter, big old fat pill running down range, okay, they, they can push them pretty quick, but they drop relatively quickly, okay, they're not as flat shooting. Uh, the 6.5 though, you're, you're shrinking that caliber, you're lengthening the projectile, so you've got all this bearing surface and the really long projectiles with a good boat tail, they, they can shoot a real long way and be highly accurate, have less wind drift, have less drop, and you've got more of a chance of getting on uh, point targets at range with a cartridge like the 6.5x55. And hand loading this thing, you can put a ton of powder behind it, and yep. the actions are very strong. And these things are fairly plentiful, and they're still reasonably priced for what they are. And talk about soft shooting. I mean, the 6.5x55 <laughs> really is a low recoiling cartridge compared to some of the other powerhouses we have on the table here. Man, and let me tell you what, it certainly is. The Vigero wins points because of its light and handy mm. characteristic. However, it might lose a few points because you're still launching eight millimeter out of mm. such a light rifle. So the recoil impulse is a little snappy yep. on the Vigero, but <clears throat> it is such an accurate rifle. They, they are a pleasure to shoot. The 6.5s win a little bit because of their plentiful uh, nature. They are still reasonably priced. And uh, this is an M96 model that we have on the table. So this is the full length infantry model. Mm. They also did an M38, which is mm. a little bit short of a carbine configuration. And then they had a gun called the M94, which is an even shorter cavalry version. Very, very short with a mm. Mannlicher stock. Very, very cool guns. Those are extremely rare. Yep. But the M96s can still be had for reasonable money. Um, an interesting uh, sort of feature of the M96 is also, and, and many of the Swedish uh, Mausers, is the stock disc. And the stock disc gives you a variety of different metrics about uh, the gun. Bore condition, the bore measurement, mm. all right? And off also where it says over slack, mm. that means overhold. So if there's a certain specific hold that the gun requires to shoot the point of aim, uh, mm. they will make mention of that on the stock disc. So neat. very, very cool mm. stuff from an engineering and armorer's standpoint. Each gun has a little story to tell with the stock disc, mm. okay? So uh, also these rifles were used a lot in uh, military rifle competition in Europe. And a lot of times you'll see a specialized sight that mounts inside the rear tangent here. And uh, it gives you a little um, disc on the side and you can go from 100 yards or sorry, 100 meters out to like 600 meters by spinning this little disc and you get a finer uh, point of aim. So you can drift your front sight and then dial your little rear target sight in and really, really get in on those, uh, those paper targets during those military competitions more so than you can with just the standard graduations. Oh man. But that's and, the, my, my M9638 is kind of set up that way. I, that's right. You You've know, got the, yeah, the, yeah. the diopter and style shoots, or the little, the little disc mm, on there. Yeah, yeah. It's still a uh, open sight, but it's just a little bit more fine tunable. It's like 25 um, meter increments. I think yeah. you can adjust the sights. And also, uh, these rifles, the, the M96s and the 38s, uh, are threaded, uh, 14 by one right hand. 
and they're meant more for like a blank shredding device or other muzzle attachments like grenade launching attachments and such. Um, but I found that they're concentric enough to run a large bore suppressor on. Uh, yeah, so that's your blank shredder right there. So you use wooden blanks and uh, they're just loaded with real fast pistol powder and they literally have a wooden bullet. And you would shoot the blanks and then the, the cap here would just shred the projectile and you know just give you a way to train and such. So yep. pretty neat. Yeah, um, you know, and th they really <clears throat> have um, just come up with some great stuff. Mm. One quick note on the Swedish Mausers that I'll make mention of is they are also produced with a very specific grade of steel mm, that's right. that the Swedish demanded <laughs> uh, that these rifles be produced with Swedish steel. So they, they have a very, uh, it's a certain alloy with a very specific chromium and nickel content. And it's uh, it, it is a very strong, but not brittle metal. And uh, these things are made out of high quality mm. Swedish steel. Very, very good stuff. All right, so one last rifle. We always have a wild card in every Five Guns video, and we hope you learned a few things about Mauser rifles. Mm. They're a ton of fun, but this is a Mauser rifle that many of you, maybe you've never seen before. Okay, this is a Husqvarna M46, okay? So this is a sporting rifle from Husqvarna, mm. and this particular rifle is chambered in 9.3 by 57. It sounds like a lot, and it is. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so they, they call these things the potato launcher. <laughs> They're meant for killing elk and other large game, but Eric has taken deer with them. Small deer. Yes, I have. Small Georgia deer. All right, so these are made on Swedish actions. Mm. All right, so a lot of these are, are scrubbed or repurposed uh, M96 or M38 actions, and then they're rebarreled with a sporting contour mm. 9.3 by 57 barrel. The 9.3 by 57, generally your nominal bullet weights are going to be between uh, 230 to mm. 260 grains. And in Sweden, they call this the potato launcher. And with good reason, because it's a big, heavy bullet. Um, the 9.3 is definitely a fat bullet. So imagine an 8 millimeter Mauser, but necked out to 9.3. Mm. That's essentially what they, a 9.3 by 57 is. Uh, you can use 8 millimeter as a parent case, as far as I know. And mm. you can convert uh, 30 alt 6 into this brass mm. as well. So. You can. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool cartridge, and it's a great way to get into a big bore stopping rifle. I mean, with the proper load, I've got some Norma ammo that is loaded, you know, pretty stout. That Norma and, Oryx is some, some hot stuff, for sure. Yes. So these guns can certainly um, put down some very large game, and I, I would say that this rifle can put down anything that walks on this continent. Probably. No problem. I mean, it's not, I wouldn't consider it maybe like a dangerous game rifle. You might have to move up to like the 62, the 9.3 by 62, which is a lot more powder. It's kind of like uh, an H&H &H Magnum 9.3 more or less. Yep. But um, those rifles have taken a lot of very large animals. Uh, you see photos of guys over in Europe hunting large elk and moose, uh, and they're being stopped with this sporting rifle. And really, the, the thing is, those things are very, very affordable. Uh, when okay. you can find them. They're yeah. very, very good rifles for the money, and the ammo is still plentiful. Really, the ammunition for all these rifles on the table is still produced today. It's very plentiful, mm -hmm. it's very available, and it's affordable. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, companies like Privy Partisan, you know, they're they're still making quite a <clears> bit <throat> of, uh, of ammo and, and some of these obscure cartridges, not just these, but many obscure mm -hmm. cartridges. So a lot of these old mill serps are really making a big comeback with shooters, and there's a new generation of shooters that are being exposed to them. And of course, as a result, there's a demand for the ammunition and accessories and things. So um, these old war horses are a lot of fun to shoot, you know, and um, I think it's just really important to kind of keep the, the heritage of these old guns alive. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wanted to make this video today to discuss some cool Mauser rifles. And we'll probably wind up doing a very similar video to this for Mosins mm -hmm. and Enfields and some of the other uh, models of rifle as well. So expect those soon. And uh, what's your favorite Mauser? Did we leave your favorite Mauser out? Stop. Oh, I'm sorry, did we disappoint you? Well, let, let me know in the comment section below what your favorite uh, rifle is uh, that's in the Mauser family. And if we can get a hold of it, maybe we'll do another video and show your top five favorites. So let us know what you think. And as always, I wanna take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters. Those of you who purchase man cans over on the website, thank you so much for the support. Also, those of you who go over to Ballistic Inc., pick yourself up a t-shirt. We would greatly appreciate it. That's a wonderful way to support your favorite content creators. I think right now we're up to over 50 content creators on Ballistic Inc. Indeed. So if there's somebody over there you really love the content, pick up a shirt. That money goes to support those content creators. Great way to support your favorite people. 
Thank you so much for watching today. We hope you enjoyed it. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon. See you guys.